this is Bob uh, from Medicate Academy, and today I'm going to present a podcast featuring one of the directors of Medicate Academy, none, no less than uh, Matt Chapman. How are you, Matt? Hi, Bob. Good to see you today. Yeah. Yeah, very good to see you. Um, things are looking good. So, um, thought I'd get you on today to talk a little bit about um, what drives the business, you know, the logistics, the admin. Um, you know, where, where you see the company going and what your business ethos is uh, about Medicare and business in general. And I thought people would just be interested in getting your take on things as opposed to mine, which is from the point of view as a trainer. Mm. So, well, yeah, you know, you, you um, got me involved in this a couple of years ago, really. And, uh, you know, the, the big thing that stood out for me um, when I saw this happening was the student experience, it was just, it was phenomenal the feedback that you just get from the students. They, they can't want enough of the service we provide, um, the medically trained role players. And, you know, without exception, I never worked in a business where you get such positive feedback. Um, you know, there's always a grumpy customer somewhere. But I've, I, I haven't, I still, after a couple of years now working with Medicate, still haven't found a grumpy student. You know, no. it's always five out of five. Um, that's it's what a win, it's a win win, isn't it? It's, um, yeah. You know, when I first spoke to you, because we'd worked together in a corporate sort of setting, doing, I was doing bits of training for your other company. And, um, I, I, you know, I, when you came on one of the jobs with me, I think it was, it was the first thing you said. I, I can't believe this. And I, I'd never worked in, a, in, a, in an area myself where it was a win-win. You know, we would have a great time. And essentially the customer, the students, would also have a good time. Um, so I had to share that with you because there's no other business model like it, really. Would that be fair to say? No, that's right. It, uh, it's just absolutely amazing, the 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 need and the requirement and and the the target market for from my point of view was so clear as well you know very often you have know, run a couple of businesses and you know there's there's several areas you can get business from or sell to mm -hmm. but um educate academy you know one of the very clear sectors is the 42 universities with uh, medical um, schools in um, and we're now, after a couple of years, in several of those and, and delivering some great student experiences um, across the seven systems. And, uh, you know, what you and uh, your, your fellow um, ACEs do. Mm. I mean, obviously, you're providing a, a, a service um, and it's, it's people. Obviously, it's, it's our ability to impart information and help the students develop, pass their exams and so on, mm. um, which is always good. Um, what about the ethics that underlie w what you're doing? Because we were talking uh, just a few weeks ago uh, and you were talking about um, what drives you in business and you were talking about values. How, how, yeah. how do you see their work with within Medicare? Are they different? Are they different values because they're different type mm. of business? Or do you have the same sort of moral code, the same ethics that you have in one business as you would have in Medicare? Yeah, I don't think the values change too much. Um, uh, you know, in terms of Medicare, you know, transparency in all we do, mm -hmm. um, the quality of what we deliver is hugely hugely important mm. um and you know that measuring and monitoring that student feedback that we get to make sure we deliver time and time again mm. and i think you know there are some basics within these values such as you know communicating with a client really simply and effectively and getting back to them you know my my goal is always within 24 hours you'll have a response from us mm. um you know, at minimum, hopefully we can respond to you in that day. But yeah. if, you, if you're, you know, having a request for our services, then, you know, we'll, we'll come out to you. Uh, we'll respond within 24 hours. Whereas some of our competitors, you know, you can pick up the phone call, leave a, leave a message uh, and they don't respond. You know, recently I was, uh, I was actually going to do some clay pigeon shooting. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I, uh, you know, it just reopened. A friend of mine wanted to go along, so uh, you know, I 
I rang in, there was nobody answering the phones. Um, and then, so I went on their website and I filled out a customer inquiry form. And, you know, that was several weeks ago and still haven't heard anything from them. It's like, right. you know, it is a good quality business, but for some reason they've just dropped the ball on the, on the experience they're giving, you know, new customers. Mm. Um, and that's, you know, definitely not something that works for me. It's basic, no. isn't it, to return a call? Yeah, well, I, that's why I like working with you because in my capacity as like a role player and an actor and a trainer, I'd work with other companies who really were taking their eye off the ball. They had lots mm. of work coming in, and I think because of that, it was like, well, it doesn't matter, you know. Mm. Uh, we'll call you later sort of thing. And what I found with working with you was like, that was the first thing. You've, you mentioned transparency. The first thing I noticed was that you were totally open about where we were going, what direction the training would go, uh, and what, what the contract was involving. Uh, mm. And I'd never had that experience with most of the companies. They would give you scant information. You'd turn up to do a job. Sometimes it wouldn't have even been booked in. And, and other times you had the completely different, had a completely different view of what you were supposed to be delivering. Whereas surprise uh, then, isn't it? You go, Oh yeah, I can deliver that, but that's not, I was asked to deliver. Yeah. Um, whereas with, with working with you, I knew exactly what I needed to do when I got to do a job. And, and I, and I think you've carried that ethos over in Medicaid where we ensure that you mentioned it before the quality that the level, the level of performance is uh, commensurate with the level of need of the customer. You know, by yeah. customer, I mean, you know, the academics and the clinicians that we, we work with. Yeah, it's, um, it's important for the medical schools to know that mm -hmm. who they're going to have as an ACE, what that ACE is going to be delivering, what the objectives yeah. of the day are. But equally, it's important for our ACEs to have that in writing because you can have a verbal conversation. But as we all know, we, mm. we some a verbal conversation it can be misconstrued yeah so as long as that's followed up in writing and mm. and both parties see that then it just means there's less room for error of course we're human we all make mistakes but yeah you know reducing that error rate making sure um our the medical schools you know receive a great service from us um that's important yeah do you find um that working with um, universities and colleges, which are, I reckon is fairly new for you, um, you know, looking at the background that you've had previously, um, was it any more of a challenge than working with, say, a, a corporate body like, I don't know, like O2 or BT or something mm. like that? Yeah, the, the similarities. Um, there's similarities, but no, you're right. I hadn't been connected with academia, if you like, too closely. Um, where it was, it, yeah, it was less commoditized and more, more done on a verbal handshake. Yeah. Um, we know you, so mm. you're going to do this, and then it's just all verbal, and then <laughs> things change or you get stuff last minute. Whereas, yeah. it, as you know, what you know, what we've got now is, you know, we've got contracts with uh, the people we work with and we've got yeah. 12 month programs. So, you know, we know where we're going. Yeah. Our ACEs know where they go in. The students yeah. know that they're going to get the support off us. Uh, yeah. And the universities and medical schools know that we're going to be there. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, when I first came in, it, it seemed to be somebody would ring you up and can you do something tomorrow say like, well yeah. we can all try and be flexible and we could do that but i personally don't like living in sort of um, emergency mode i more of a planner get it all yeah. planned in everybody yeah. knows where they're going everybody knows what the budget is what we're trying to do yeah. no last minute stuff we can deliver higher quality then and the right people um to the right universities mm. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was different, and it is different. Um, but uh, yeah, you just communicate, communicate, and and it works out. And of course, uh, adapting to that is you know been able to adapt to a changing environment. Uh, a useful skill to have for anybody in business, any type of business, isn't it? Obviously, like you say, you obviously would all prefer it if we don't have to have a knee jerk reaction to a phone call. Uh, we can respond to that type of thing, mm. uh, but obviously we prefer to have order and agendas. 
Now, that's one yeah. thing I noticed about you. Every even when we have meetings about things, you'll have an agenda. Well, <laughs> not with, not with a cup of coffee, obviously. Although that has been known. <laughs> you didn't call me, Bob. <laughs> always got my notebook out, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, you've always got your notebook out. That's something else I've noticed. You you take voluminous notes, and and that's the other um, thing. When when um when you meet with uh you know a, a potential voluminous. Class, Huh? Voluminous. What's, what's the definition? Voluminous, huge, big, big book. Huge. Voluminous. Yeah, you got big, a new word for big the notes. Day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This, so, 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 um, yeah. When, whenever you, whenever I've been in with meetings with you, you do take lots and lots of notes, um, because obviously what you want to do is, uh, you, you know, you'll get a general picture. You get the big picture from having a conversation, but you need to sit down and get specifics, don't you? And I've noticed that about you. You like to get the specifics. Well, in one, one of my books that I read, it was, uh, it was sort of, you know, take, take things, reduce your memory, you know, like a computer when it gets full yeah. up and it goes it gets full slows up. down, doesn't it? So yeah. if you can write things down, then you don't need to clutter your brain yeah. with having all those thoughts. So if yeah. it's written down, it doesn't have to go into the RAM or the memory. Um, and it's always there to it's refer like back to hard drive. Yeah. And as you get older, you know, you, you need to write things down more, I think. (laughs) No, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I think that's absolutely true. So, um, we've talked about the values. We talked about the student experience and the, the type of feedback we get. And you said you were quite shocked that it's actually like a hundred percent. Yeah. I I wouldn't believe any company who said that they had a hundred percent. Uh, you know, fives out of five from the yeah. customer base because there's always a hole. There's always a fault. Yeah, yeah. But, there's all absolutely. You're always going to get one person even who doesn't like what you're delivering. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the skill of the the people we've got working with us. You know, the aces and the role players. Um, they are highly skilled at what they do, and they can adapt on the hoof as well. So. Yeah. Often, because I've had conversations with you where you've said, so what, were, what, what was the nature of the session today? Was it respiratory or musculoskeletal? And I'll say, well, it was supposed to be, but when we got there, we had to do GI exams, for example. Yeah. And you're all sort of like, I, I was always, it always made me laugh because you were like, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> no, you don't like that. <laughs> no. um, but that's the good thing about the aces we use. They're, they're highly skilled and they can operate yeah. sort of on the edge, if you like, you know, mm. it's like, okay, wh- wh- what have you got to throw at me? Yeah, I can do GI. Yes, I can do respiratory. Yes, I can do cardio. Mm. I think it took you quite a while to get your head around the whole process of the ACE and what, what an ACE delivers, I guess. Yeah. And of course, being a, being in business, you have to be able to trust that your product is going to work. The product in this case being us, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. will the product function correctly like it should do? Uh, one of the bits I, I really enjoyed was, you know, the, the Oskies where there were a couple of failing students at the start of the day. Yeah. Um, and I know we were just given, um, you know, we were just given the room really with the failing yeah. students and, and an right. objective. And mm. God, the turnaround in their skills when perhaps the pressure was taken off and yeah. they just had the aces uh, working mm. with them for the day. Yeah. Um, and the turnaround in their knowledge, you know, they, they could have gone to 20, 30, 40 hours of tuition yeah. uh, where they're spoken at or, yeah. you know, book reading or, mm. um, but actually to get hands on and start delivering what they should have learned already. Um, it was amazing to see the turnaround of some mm. of those students. Yeah, it does. Have, uh, the ace does a good ace will have an, a, a, a a huge impact on the 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 process of learning for the student. Uh, mm. James Ennis, who I did a podcast with, who you know of at Chester University, one of our customers, if you yeah. like, mm. uh, and a good friend of ours now. Uh, James said the same thing. He said that um, when people work when students work with an ace, they relax more than they do with yeah. academic. There's no pressure on them. And obviously when you don't have pressure uh, while you're learning, you will learn that much quicker. Think more clearly, can't you? Yeah, you you can think clearly. People don't (laughs) learn through fear. Very few people learn through fear. I mean, it's an old way of teaching. When I was at school, the teachers, you were, you know, terrified of some of them, quite frankly. Uh, uh, You did it right there, Bob. Yeah, 
And uh, I did all right. Yeah. You obviously but, weren't but too terrified of them. <laughs> I would have done better had the teachers been a bit more relaxed in their style. Uh, hmm. And obviously, we can all recount times when we had a good teacher, what we call a good teacher. And those hmm. are the ones that always made the lesson fun. And I think, I think what we've done at Medicate is we've sort of cherry picked some of the best and trained some of the best aces and role players we possibly can get our hands on. Uh, and that's partly because we reward them with good quality work and pay them in a timely fashion. Yeah. You know, because the, the job of an actor and an ace can sometimes be fraught with difficulties, particularly when it comes to invoicing and getting paid. Yeah. I mean, that, that's just as important to you, isn't it? Yeah, and we, we often pay our aces. Well, I would say 99% of the time we pay our aces before the client, the, well, I say the client, the, uh, the university pays us. Yeah. Because it's yeah. important to, um, you know, if we've got cash in the bank, then we might as well pay out. We know the universities will pay in the end. Yeah. Um, not that that's uh, an advert for us to go over 90, 120 days, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> most no, but are quite it, good and yeah. pay within 30 days. But yeah. yeah, which is good. Uh, um, and I mean, me personally, having, you know, worked for other companies as a role player, um, sometimes you could be waiting a month, two months. And mm. in one case, with the bigger the company, often the worse the, the payment schedule. And yeah. I once waited, I had to wait six months. And you, uh, the, the, the type of people who work with us, the aces and the role players, sort of have got used to that. They mm. get, they're disgruntled, but they get used to it. But the comment I got from a couple of the guys who worked for us, uh, said, oh, yeah, um, you paid me yesterday. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah we, yeah, we paid you yesterday. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was like, wow, um, I wasn't expecting until the end of the month or yeah. you know, the end of the week at, at, at the very late, you know, earliest. Um, and that, that, I think that's an important feature. You always care about um, making sure that not, not just so that is the customer taken care of, but our people as well. You know, the, the people yeah, and, who, and how it works with us on payment is as soon as the client has confirmed to us that they've they've had delivery of their ACE services and they yeah. fight, give us a five out of five, yeah. um, then the ACE gets paid you know, mm -hmm. immediately. So normally we get feedback on the day, yeah. quite uh, usually. And, uh, and as long as the client's happy, then, um, then of course, uh, payments are made. So yeah, again, a win-win situation, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. You know, and people want to come back again and again and again. And, and I've, I've, I mean, how do you see the future of Medicaid? You know, um, I'm yeah, sure. so you've, you started talking there about, you know, the existing ACEs. And we've got yeah. a really good core group of ACEs that mm. um, we've still got availability and, um, and resource for other universities. But as, we, as we're growing, we'll need to take on more. Mm. Um, and I foresee um you know us having a specific trainer where we're doing train the training on a monthly basis with yeah. our aces getting them up to speed making sure the quality control is there um having regular monthly training events mm. um where um the people we use are constantly built on and their knowledge is constantly growing you know currently we're quite lucky uh, you know the aces that we've got on our books are highly experienced with you know 10 15 20 years of experience um but still it still helps to sit down and share best practice oh yeah um yeah. and and that way we'll continue giving the student great experience um but equally we'll have internal measurements and, and monitoring mm. systems to make sure we continually grow because if, if you've got a team of 20 aces there's going to be somebody who's bloody brilliant and somebody mm -hmm. who's you know not so yeah. good even though they could be good but they're not brilliant so we need to see what the brilliant people are doing and bring those good people up a level yeah um, so I, I see that happening over the next year or so and that's continuing to do that but probably in conjunction with some of our clients you know from Wolverhampton University perhaps in Chester mm -hmm. University where they will um, take part in the accreditation process of our races as yeah. well that would be yeah. a that would be an idea which is something that both those universities are talking about and it's something mm. that I think we discussed over two or three years ago when we sort of first put these ideas together to work together with Medicare um, it was accreditation is absolutely vital 
you know, and and it seems like you know a lot of uh, bodies, institutions, groups have been sitting on their hands a bit. Well, obviously, because they've got lots of other things going on. Mm. It'd be really useful to, to get each ace accredited uh, by some sort of governing body. I don't know what that would be. You know. Mm. Um, a royal college or, or physicians or whatever, whatever it might be, um, mm. and that that uh, ensures that the standard of the ACEs is going to be at its highest point. Mm. As as far as I can see, there's really it's there's almost only... them getting a license, isn't it? And it's yeah, renewed so you're having annually. a license to practice, which yeah, gives confidence, exactly. obviously, to the clinicians that we work with. Yeah. I mean, once once the experienced ACEs work with a clinician, the clinician very quickly sees that you know. Yes, they're lay educators, but they really do know how to get a physical exam done correctly, which allows, and this is the important thing, I think, which allows the student to pass the exam because that's mm -hmm. what we're fundamentally doing. We're not clinicians. Yeah. We don't replace clinicians. We're not clinically mm -hmm. trained as medics. Um, what we have been trained to a high level to do, though, is to teach students how to pass their exams, you know, and, yeah. and that's what the universities want. They want to have... A system in place like Wolverhampton is a, a, a case in point. We started working with Wolverhampton with the clinical director there, Pete Gorman, and and he turned his university around from a low performing university to one of the highest performing universities in about a year. Mm. Um, and I and Pete even says he said, you know, you, you were part of that process, and I, I want to thank you for that. Not to say that Pete didn't put a lot of work in with the help of Professor Paul and other clinicians um but i think um yeah and there'd been some good work started just previous to him as well hadn't there there's some good, there. really good foundations put in yeah there have been foundations put in and, and and it's having the right people to do the job um mm. and i think the continuous training and development of aces and role players is vital um it there's some organizations who uh uh sort of send out role players not aces specifically but role players medical role players and they really, the company just doesn't really know them. They just send them out and mm. they have a cursory phone call saying, oh, can you do this job on such and such? Uh, without any regular meetings, without any team events, if you like. Yeah. What you're talking about is changing that whole culture of saying, look, these people that work for us are part of a team. They're part yeah. of Medicare yeah. and, and we need to look after them, essentially. Yeah, let's have a 12 month plan on uh, yeah. how you want to use your resource, when and why. Uh, mm -hmm. let, let's see currently where you are and let's see the improvements. Let's yeah. let's add substantial value to. to and that's a word to. you use all the time, isn't it? Value. You know, mm. uh, it's one of your core values that is talking about value to the to the the end user, if you want to call them that, you know. Yeah, the student. Um, to the and, student. And, and, well, and, and of course the, to the clinicians. And the professors and the clinicians, yeah, because they're, yeah. they're all trying to get, uh, you know, their university to be the best medical school. Absolutely. And, yeah. you know, there's some amazing ones out there. And, you know, the end result is, is massively important, isn't it? Because our health is in their hands, really. So, okay, Matt. So, uh, obviously, value is really important. Yeah, we've talked about your values as a businessman and the values that Medicare have. We've talked about ongoing training of aces and role players, which I think is a really key point. Uh, we've, we've, we've talked about the win-win situation that we have, um, that you know, you're surprised at having such great customer feedback. Um, mm. You know, I, I'd, uh, any, any sort of university that's got a medical school watching this perhaps, I'd sort of uh, say to them that uh, if they haven't used us, then, um, if we can just simply agree sort of a, a day session or a half day session with their students, we can work out, you know, what system they want to focus on and we can, we can tailor it for exactly where they need to go. Mm. Um, if they're not happy with that uh, half day um, at all, if they don't give us a five out of five, then we simply won't invoice them. Mm. As simple as that. And, and they can get to see and test um, exactly what we deliver mm. and the reaction from the students yeah and i can guarantee you unless they get you know five out of five then which which is almost guaranteed um yeah. then you know i'd certainly be happy to be holden to that promise yeah i mean i think that, i think that's a, a great offer actually and um it'd be worth like you say any universities watching this or colleges 
with the PA program, medical schools, because mm. our guys are experienced working with uh, dental students as well as nurses and yeah. physiotherapists. Um, but we tend to focus mostly on the physician's associate program um, to get in touch with you at Medicaid uh, and, and speak to you because you will pick up the phone and talk to someone. They're not going to get an answer machine, are they? No. You know, um, so, I mean, uh, in conclusion, I, um, I'd just like to say thanks for giving up your day today. Uh, well, a bit of it anyway. Uh, and if you've got anything else to add, you'd like to say, Matt, um, I'll leave you to leave a part and shot if you like. I think, um, I think we covered quite a lot. Um, yeah. I, th I think we, we are currently an underused resource, mm. um, but we've got strong credibility after with a number of universities using us, uh, and, and several years under our belt mm. and, and, and many tens of years of experience in our in the aces that we use yep. so i'd say come and test us out uh, and uh, almost guarantee you a fantastic experience okay well thanks very much matt for sort of joining in today it's been interesting and um i look forward to seeing you fairly shortly oh, thanks very much bob cheers no, cheers